Give me 20 minutes and I will make your next Mass Effect playthrough the best one you've ever had. Who is Shepard in her apartment? Jack and Rex as squadmates in Mass Effect 3? A forgotten DLC missing from Legendary Edition. Didn't like the original character creator? Here is a new version of it. Visuals feel outdated? How about adding ray tracing? Want to clap more alien chicks? Wait, what? In this video, I've included 40 of my favorite mods that can make your Legendary Edition thoroughly legendary. They can make your game so much more fun. Let's start. Okay, so Bioware overhaul levels in Legendary Edition by adding more props in Eden Prime. Sadly, this was one of the very few levels in the whole game of getting love. But this is exactly what the Versification project attempts to change. This small mod makes levels more immersive by polluting them with NPCs and more clutter. For example, two young females are not fully present in the game. Instead of male offices, there are female offices here and there. There are Turian couples. There are even Turian. Oh dear. My eyes, my eyes. We're going to hell. Finally, some human NPCs also got retouched, as now they have more varied clothing and hairstyles. The mod is in very early development stage and a huge update is supposed to release later this year, adding underrepresented species to the game and just breathing more life into civilian hubs overall. Pinnacle Station If you don't remember, this is the only DLC missing from Legendary Edition. Apparently it's because the source code for the DLC was lost and according to Bioware it would take professional developers minimum 6 months to recreate. So a group of modders with no game development experience recreated in 4. Story time over, if you haven't played Pinnacle Station, this DLC adds a spaceport where you can compete in a combat simulator. There are 5 maps, 3 new game modes, and if you complete all side missions, you will unlock the secret, most difficult mission of all Mass Effect games. Complete it and your ship will receive a new apartment. There isn't much to do in here, but you can use local terminal to quickly unlock some sweet exotic gear. Legendary Edition is a flawless masterpiece with no bugs whatsoever. Help, my game is missing background music. Okay, one bug, come on. My game freezes after game crashes after cannot loading screen. 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 In fact, the whole list of game fixes that community patches apply is nearly 30 pages long. But while applied bug fixes are ridiculously complex and vast, I'll rather skip them in this video and focus solely on the framework. If you've ever played modded Skyrim, you're most likely familiar with mod configuration tab added to the game by script extender. The framework does the same thing in Legendary Edition. Just pause the game and there will be a new tab called Mod Settings. In here you can customize your mods on the go without having to reinstall them or reinstall the whole game. Currently there are very few mods that actually use the framework, but in my opinion it's only a matter of time before more mod creators utilize this powerful and user-friendly tool. One mod that requires the framework is the Appearance Modification menu. Let's be honest, in-game character creator is both old and very lacking when it comes down to customizing Shepard. Plus, if you wish to change your character look with gameplay, there is no way. I'm sorry, on PC you could use save editor, but good luck figuring out what any of these lines mean. So apart from character creator, in the beginning of each game, there was no way. But now there is. Just walk up to any closet, press Y, and there you have it. New character creator. You can use it to easily access more hairstyles, personalize makeup, use face sculpting options, or just have multicolored eyes, because why not? Unlike in Save Editor, all of those changes can be previewed real-time, and you can access this menu at any point of the game. Advanced Weapon Models By far the best combat overall mod for Mass Effect. It ports weapon models from Mass Effect 2 and 3 to Mass Effect 1, thus increasing weapon variety in the first game. Some of players' favorite weapons like Black Widow, Predator, or Piranha are ported. But don't mistake in this mod just for a visual overhaul because weapon parameters are changed too. For example, Crossfire has Matic model and is semi-automatic. As a result, it has almost perfect accuracy even at a very low level, but the trade-off is much lower damage per minute. Nearly all other weapons have similar changes and feel more unique now. They have different fire modes, variety of fire rates, accuracy stats, or just deal different amount of damage. This means that unlike in Vanilla, in which DPM is the only relevant stat, with this mod installed you may equip new weapon just to see how it looks or how it works when used against enemies. I found myself using the second best sniper rifle in the game just because it looks like Black Widow, and it made Shepard look badass. Or this pistol. It has like infinite fire rate but almost zero accuracy. Okay, so I'm not touching the right stick? Look at the recall. <laughs> so you literally have to walk into enemies to kill anything. EGM 
You've probably heard about it, but this mode is something that I always build my ME3 mod list around, so it deserves recognition. Basically, this mod makes Mass Effect 3 better by adding new contents in pretty much any type, shape, or form. Here are examples. Pre-mission menu is now changed. You can always personalize your armors and weapons before mission. In combat, you can lower your weapons by pressing P, toggle helmets on and off by clicking on H. And in non-combat, you can change your outfit at any time by clicking on Ctrl plus L. In the shuttle bay on the Normandy, there is a new chest. By opening it, you can obtain all weapons you've collected in Mass Effect 2, immensely speeding up the game progress. Squadmates are retached. Every Shepard's ally wears personalized clothes instead of regular combat armors. Garrus receives robes, Javik uses new casual outfits, Edie wears a Leviathan DLC armor, and so on. There are alternative clothing options if you don't like any shows in the video. By the way, did you hate how maximum number of allies went down from 11 in Mass Effect 2 to just 7 in Mass Effect 3? Well, it's not a problem anymore, since with EGM you can get temporary access to all squadmates from Mass Effect 1 and 2. They can then aid you in some secondary missions. Normandy is also overhauled. There is a War Assets Terminal placed next to the Galaxy map. You can run through the Security Terminal without the stop, install Shooting Range in the Hangar Bay, or collect and show off your vehicles. There's also a new menu added to Shepard's CSC Terminal where you can assign your personnel to various positions on the ship or even hire new crew members. Take a look at this. I've just hired Virtual Gath as a propulsion specialist, so he shows up on the Normandy. There are quite a few options, like you can hire security, onboard chef, medical personnel, Personalizing staff actually impacts the gameplay, like by making Normandy have more fuel or by adding health and special ability bonuses. And pause. See this? Shepard will now use equipped weapons during cutscenes. This also works in Mass Effect 2. Collector's Cabin. The ultimate completionist dream. This mod adds collectibles that you unlock after completing missions in Mass Effect 3 that will then appear in Shepard's Cabin. You can find new paintings, protein beacon replica, Ancient Krogan statue, Cerberus Bomb, Cerberus Bomb! A total of 24 collectibles is added. Personally, I think this mod makes Shepard's dream a little cozier, and now we can also have a place to admire your progress. Unfortunately, it's only semi compatible with EGM at the moment, so you will have to choose between only one of those two mods. The final mission of Mass Effect 3 is Burn Bones, compared to what it could have been. You land, you run, you get shot. The end. Underwhelming to say at least. Take Earth back spices things up by adding a little bit more vibrance to the final mission of the trilogy. First of all, story characters like Diana Allers, Paron, and Shaila or show up on the Earth. There are many more characters present, I've just mentioned three. Also, depending on players' decisions leading up to the finale, nearly 40 different more assets may also appear on the Earth. Here are Grissom Academy students, Gap Hammets, even Armored Elkir. The mod also applies slight adjustments to some cutscenes and level design, and a few ambient dialogues are no actual dialogues or interactive conversations. Oh, and the whole final push sequence looks like from an action movie. Take a look. I love mods that add more variety to the Mass Effect 1 and certain stages does exactly that. Depending on story progression, certain Arcarius will wear different outfits. In stage 1, in the beginning of the game, he wears robes. In stage 2, he starts wearing his regular armor but with no cybernetic upgrades. And in stage 3, he is fully enhanced with Reaper Tag. Fun fact, this mod was actually inspired by certain Arcarius concept art published in Art of Mass Effect book. I don't want to stir debate whether Mass Effect ending was good or bad, but I never liked how original ending made nearly all War Apps feel. And even with extended cuts, it wasn't enough of a closure to the story for me. Aim kinda of fixes it. Since it changes game ending, I'll try to show it as much spoiler free as I can. With Aham, Shepard Anderson dialogue is extended. Think how proud your kids would be. The whole Star Trail dialogue section is removed from the game entirely and Destruction becomes the only ending available. Cutscenes are also changed to make ending scenes have more sense. For example, Citadel and Relays are not destroyed. There are also more epilogue slides showing the aftermath of the Reaper War. But most importantly, Commander Shepard survives. Commander! Keep looking. Shepard! Over here. Shepard!
The team also pays respects to the fallen at the monument wall, Shepard and her love interest have a reunion, and then Normandy flies into the unknown. In my opinion, this is the perfect ending that majority of fans wanted to see. I ran my game with 60 texture mods installed, but I chose top 3 for this video. A lot of textures is the first one. While Legendary Edition has substantially upgraded Mass Effect textures, not everything was improved. This is where a lot of texture mod comes in. This 28GB texture pack replaces textures that Bioware showed no love. Have a look at this. Door holograms are now crisp and high quality. Galaxy map clusters are improved across all three games. Some character face textures are overhauled to make them more in line with how they looked in the original games. You can even read text displayed on terminals or data pads because it's so sharp. Besides that, a lot also improves over 4000 static lights that Legendary Edition didn't change at all. Basically, Bioware reused original static light textures that are super low quality, and as a result, some light sources cast weirdly looking dark artifacts. A lot of took these low quality textures and properly upscaled them with an AI. Speaking of light sync, Legendary Edition improved post processing in all three games, but it didn't add ray tracing. However, thanks to Reshade and a shader called RTGI, it is possible to simulate ray tracing in the game. It has some disadvantages compared to hardware accelerated ray tracing, but it does the job just right. With RTGI, light sources now emit actual lines, slightly more aggressive and more consistent ambient occlusion causes shadows to be darker, and areas that are under direct light sources are now illuminated. While you could argue that visual changes are not worth the performance cost it takes to run RTGI, I still think it makes the game ever so slightly more beautiful. Plus, the lighting is more natural and the overall ambience feels a little bit more authentic. A lot improved textures, a lot improved cinematics. Cutscenes in Legendary Edition are only 1620p rather than 84k, and on top of that, they weren't even upscaled properly. It's like whoever was responsible for it resized cinematics in movie editor and then just call it a day. Love Alt, on the other hand, upscaled all cutscenes with the best suited AI model to 84k, he then sharpened them with manually adjusted AI. He interpolated all footage to 60 FPS and then encoded it at much higher bitrate to preserve as much quality as possible. I think the result is stupendous. All cinematics are crisper and much higher quality. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but have a look at zoomed in footage. I love playing Mass Effect, but I think that many mechanics in the game just didn't age that well. So I have a list of 19 mods that are must install for me, that I use to overall combats, remove annoying mechanics, or just improve the game overall. The first one is Streamlined Weapon Loadouts, easily one of my top 3 mods for Mass Effect 1. Basically it removes all weapon types that Shepard squad members can use proficiently. Here is an example, in Garrus' skill tree you can see that he can only be trained to use assault and sniper rifles. So if this mod applies, he will only have assault and sniper rifle equipped on his back. Similar changes are done to all other crew members. Additionally, this mod also allows you to unequip weapons. This can lead to some interesting gameplay possibilities like full biotic no weapons builds or just enjoying the immersion of not having to carry weapons in civilian halves. The fault field of view is too low, like ridiculously too low. It's only 70 degrees. That's why I use better camera, which substantially increases camera FOV, making the game more enjoyable. The mod comes with 4 field of view values, so choose whatever suits you the most. In vanilla, Shepard can run for like what? 3 seconds? That's ridiculous, she's a soldier. And unlimited sprint allows her to run like a soldier for however long you wish. I always combine this mod with remove screen shake and Shepard movement animation replacer. No video footage, you just have to trust me on this one. By the way, have you actually noticed that if you use controller, you can't turn your camera around when sprinting in Mass Effect 3? It's like camera sensitivity drops to 0%. Sprint improvement fixes this issue. Now you can look around when sprinting. It also allows you to rebind sprint button to the left stick. Crouch button. This allows you to crouch at any time without having to hide behind cover. Exactly how it works in Mass Effect 1. I think the small change adds a completely new dimension to combat in Mass Effect 2. Like you can use elevation to your advantage, or objects that were not intended to be used as covers to protect yourself. I think that compared to Mass Effect multiplayer, enemy faction variety in Mass Effect 3 is lacking. That's why I use combination of 3 mods, Cerberus, Reaper and Get Retrofits. Since Cerberus is the most overhauled faction, I'll start with them. Assault soldiers now have different equipments and they look like this. Centurions wear in thermal armor, 
Old Centurions are now Heavy Centurions, but they are protected by both shields and armor, making them tough to beat. And additionally, Dragoons appear at Cerberus HQ as elusive and personal bodyguards. Geth, just like Cerberus, also receive new enemy type, Geth Bombus. You probably know them from Mass Effect multiplayer. And how annoying those little bombing pieces are. And Reapers have access to Collector Forces. Here is Smith fighting with Siona Tessia. And here is Praetorian going absolute bananas. Casual Habs. This mod allows Shepard and crew members to wear casual clothes in civilian Habs in Mass Effect 1 and 2. Combined with Streamlined Loadouts mod from earlier, it makes visiting Habs similar to how it is in Mass Effect 3 and Andromeda. It also adds casual clothes for Garus and Frex. A Mass Effect 2 version of this mod does the same thing, but there are even more clothes for pretty much everyone on board Normandy. There is new outfit for Morden, Jacob, Zaid and so on. Many games are insane time wasters, especially when you replay the game. To me, they give no gameplay value and they are simply redundant. With skip minigames, you can just walk up to any terminal and the whole minigame menu will disappear. It saves insane amount of time. Another very useful mod is Quick Loot. In Mass Effect 1, whenever you open any container, this menu appears. For me, it breaks gameplay flow too much. With Quick Loot, whenever you loot anything, all gear goes directly into your inventory. Also, you'll get a warning message if your inventory is about to be full. Normandy Rapid Transit. This adds a new fast travel location on the Citadel. Just walk up to any transit station and there will be a new fast travel location called Normandy. Select it and you'll be transported directly onto the ship, saving the hassle of going through the seaside. Faster Normandy. You spend way too much traveling on the galaxy map. Why not to make Normandy quicker? This is Normandy speed before the mod is installed. And this is the speed after. Pretty big difference, right? I absolutely hate probing mechanic in Mass Effect 2. With zero probes all resources, you simply collect all planet resources the moment you enter the orbit. Alternatively, if you think like having that many resources is cheating, you can use one probe all resources. It does a similar thing. I use it for Mass Effect 2. And for Mass Effect 3, I use improved scanning. With it installed, you only have to use scanner once to detect all POIs. It saves you from the hassle of having to evade repos all the time. And the final mod is Early Recruitment. This is a great mod. It allows you to recruit any squad member in Mass Effect 2 from the moment you take command of the Normandy. This can lead to some really rare dialogue findings in the campaign. <coughs> no normal illness should affect me so quickly. This plague must be especially virulent. My bones are aching. That's a common drill precursor to <coughs> respiratory illness. Let's find Morden. Hopefully he's found a treatment. And that is it. A list of 40 mods that I think make Legendary Edition legendary. They add new content, improve visuals, change characters look, or make the game more user-friendly. If you want to install mods yourself but have no idea where to start, I've made a text guide that you could use for help. Just click on the link in the description. With that being said, have fun.